Okay, hello everyone, hope you're doing well. And today we're gonna continue with our Sunday stats session. And uh, for now, this is uh, all I have for you. So this might be uh, the last one for a bit. And today we're gonna talk about the Friedman's ANOVA. So the non-parametric equivalent of the repeated measures ANOVA that we did in the last one. So yeah, let's get straight into it. We've got a question here. A researcher was interested to see if, the, if different distracting smells slow down the time it took individuals to complete a maze. 21 individuals were each exposed to three different smells in a random order to see if this had an effect on the time taken to complete their maze. So what we're doing here, so as we talked about, the repeat and measure of ANOVA is kind of a continuation of the dependent t-test. And in this case, we're gonna do, well, we don't know yet. Because we're testing the same 21 individuals on these three different factors, we know we're doing the repeat and measures because it's um, all of these are dependent variables. So obviously, if one person has a an effect on one smell and then they use another smell it's obviously the same person so it has an effect so we know we're doing that but again let's jump into Jamovi and see what we'll do so we've got our data here so we've got cut grass bacon rotten eggs so that's the three smells they used so what we do right now we don't know which test we're doing but again we need to check for this normality in this exploration tab and because it doesn't show up in the Nova tab so if we go into descriptives and we pop all our data in and we uh, basically deselect everything. All we're interested is the normality. Just make sure you've got the mean selected or the median, uh, otherwise the, the test won't show up in the descriptives. So let's just wait until that pops up. Okay, so we've got our data here. So again, for assumption tests, we want our p-value to be above 0 0.05. So in the case of cut grass and rotting eggs, that's okay. But however, in this bacon group, the p-value is below 0 0.05. So therefore the assumption hasn't been met. And then this basically tells us that we don't need to check all the other assumptions and we can jump straight into the non-parametric version. So how do we do that? Um, so firstly, just so you don't have to go back, because we know we're doing the non-parametric version, we can already select the median and the variance or the range, depending on which one you prefer. Uh, just so we have that ready for when we're reporting our data. So we've got that there and that will stay there. Firstly, we're going to ANOVA and we go into repeats of measures and over the Friedman version because this is the non parametric equivalent. So if we go in there, so we've got our thing here. So if we just pop, again, it's much more simpler view, uh, the same as the cross Quillis, it's much more simplified. So we put all our variables in and we can see our X squared statistic, degrees of freedom and our p-value. And this p-value, because it's below 0 0.05, it tells us our test is significant. So What's that? What does that mean? So what that means basically there's a significant difference in the time taken to complete the maze between the smells. But obviously we don't know which ones. So if we go into pairwise comparisons, the Durban Conover in this case, we can see which ones are significant, which the difference between which smells. So in this case, um, the, between cut grass and bacon, the P is above 0 0.05, therefore it's non-significant. The same with cut grass and rotten eggs. However, in the bacon rotten eggs group, there seems to be significant difference in the time taken to complete a task. So as we can see by this median, in the bacon case, it's 44 uh, seconds or, or minutes, whatever. But this one is significantly lower than uh, this 70 by rotten eggs. So we kind of expect that people prefer the smell of bacon and rotten eggs. And therefore we now know what this significant values means. So right now we've got everything that we need. So let's jump into Word and report this data. So as you may have noticed, we don't have a um, effect size yet in, in Jamovi. So for this, so for this non-parametric equivalent, we use this candles W. How do we use this? So we've got this equation here. So our x squared value is basically this value here that we already have. N is the number of participants. So in this case, 21. And we multiply that by the amount of factors they've been tested on. So in this case, three different smells. So we put a three there and then minus one and then you'll get this KW. And that's for the overall effect size, not for um, each of the different smells. Okay, so if we go into here, again, we've got our two parts. So I wrote there was a significant difference between the time taken to complete the maze and the smells exposed prior to. So we've got this X squared. We've got, again, our degrees of freedom here of two and our p-value and, and this is the w effect size that I got so in this case 0 0.2 something about that it's a small effect size 0 0.5 0 0.6 is a medium and then 0 0.8 and higher is a large effect size so yeah so that's the main test and then if we jump into the more specific 
because it's a non-parametric, again, we're using our median and variance or range, whichever you prefer. So the Durban post analysis showed that cut grass, and then we put that was not statistically different to bacon. And we've got our T value here. Uh, you could also put the degrees of freedom. Uh, I don't know if it gives you actually. And uh, that one, no, it doesn't. So you just put the T statistic and yeah, the P value. Also cut grass and rotten eggs was not significant. Again, you write that. However, bacon and rotting eggs was significant at P uh, equals 0 0.003. Uh, so yeah, that's how you would report the data. It's pretty simple. Again, as the cross quillis, uh, nothing to fear. Uh, just yeah, just be careful when you're reading the question to make sure you select the right test to see if the individuals tested that all the same in three in uh, different factors or or they're different and then you basically know where to go from there. Yeah, don't forget to check the assumptions and stuff like that. So yeah, that was a quick rundown of the Freedom and ANOVA. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to check the description, leave a like, subscribe, comment below if you want any help in uh, anything else. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.